this uh, what is called a passive buffer and it has naturally occurred over the years. So I did not actively plant, plant it as the more formal or constructed uh, riparian buffers are done. Riparian buffers can be established by actively planting trees, shrubs, grasses, and perennials. This method may be more labor intensive, but may help prevent competition from existing vegetation or unwanted plants in the seed bank. Buffers can also be established by passive management, which is allowing vegetation to come back on its own. These are often referred to as no-mow zones. Both establishment methods require long-term management. An unmanaged riparian buffer can quickly be taken over by undesirable plants such as invasive species. We're very interested in keeping it intact and enhancing it. And to that end, as you can see, we are being invaded by a vine honeysuckle. And this is typically what it does. It comes out early in the spring and stays late in the fall. And uh, it grows on any vertical surface. And you can see behind me some of these gums uh, are being overwhelmed by it. Uh, it's growing on the ground, and uh, we're very uh, uh, dismayed by what it's d done to our buffering trees that have volunteered here. Buffer zones often consist of three zones of planted native species. Zone 1 includes moisture-tolerant plants, often trees, that provide shading to the stream. This shading helps regulate water temperature and keep temperatures at optimal levels for aquatic life. Zone 2 often includes shrubs that are moisture tolerant but not necessarily wetland plants. Zone 3 includes grasses and herbaceous perennials that are tolerant of moderate to dry soil conditions. In urban settings, it may not be possible to create this delineation due to space and visibility constraints, but it is a good idea to include trees, shrubs, grasses, and herbaceous plants. This variety of plant types helps create a healthy stream buffer habitat. We um, tried to put uh, uh, the prescribed layers having trees at the riparian, uh, at the edge of the stream, and then bushes, uh, and then the grasses. Uh, we planted uh, uh, dogwood, we uh, planted wild plum, what happened, we have very hungry deer, and they came along and nipped the tips of these, and the, the uh, plantings died. So this is why we have the situation here where we have trees, we have volunteering trees, and grasses intermingled, and then our, our grasses that we planted in the fields. My response would be to observe early in the invasive uh, plant process and nip it in the bud. We've, we've ignored this and didn't realize how, how far it had gone. Common invasive species in Kentucky's riparian buffers include bush and Japanese honeysuckles, winter creeper, calorie or Bradford pear, and Japanese knotweed. Mechanical or herbicide treatments may be necessary to control invasive species once they become established. Landowners should also monitor newly planted buffers for wildlife browsing. In the long term, buffers should be inspected on an annual basis to ensure plant growth and survival, and to identify any areas of concern such as invasive species, storm damage, or signs of erosion. Overall, these attempts improve the quality of the water. To learn more about managing riparian buffers to protect water quality, contact your local Cooperative Extension Service office.